I'm Luke Timmerman, a biotech journalist here at the Bioinvestor Forum in San Francisco. Uh, with me today is Katrine Bosley. She's the CEO of a startup in Boston called Editas Medicine, and it has introduced a new term into our language in biotech yeah. called genome editing. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Well, in some respects, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a new technology to be able to change the genetic material, the DNA. There's, there's a little molecular machine, which actually was discovered in bacteria, that's now been adopted or adapted to be able to work in other cell types, to be able to go in and if you want to knock a gene out or knock a gene in or repair or edit a gene, this is, is able to do that right now at the laboratory level and we are working to be able to translate that into treating genetic diseases. Now, there's a lot of excitement in science, a lot of publications coming yeah. up. Why are people so excited about this? Bottom line is because when people try it, it works. So partly it's because of the power of the idea of treating diseases at a genetic level. That's a very powerful idea. People have been thinking about that for a while. There have been some earlier versions of genome editing technologies, zinc finger nucleases, which Sangamo has worked on, talons are another one. But this approach that's created all the excitement and all the publications, it seems to be much more robust and much easier to use. And I think that's why you're seeing the excitement in many different laboratories, many different cell types, many different targets. It has worked for people in, in the academic setting. And so with that robustness, I think, comes the great excitement. And anytime you have an area that's exciting and hot, there's a lot of competition. Um, I love competition. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing at Editas that's different from the others? What we're working to do is to, to take all of this great early science and deepen it in a way that makes it appropriate to take into human clinical trials. So we're still a couple of years away from a first human trial, but how do we take the cool science, figure out how to make it robust in terms of the specificity. How do you test it in preclinical safety models? How do you really explore all of the, um, the possibilities in a given program, you know, if you're going after a particular disease, so that you're very confident you can take that forward into the clinic. There will be manufacturing uh, aspects that we'll have to figure out. So there's a lot of that almost a little bit more engineering aspects that it's not necessarily what a, an academic scientist is going to do. That's why we exist, is to do that work. Uh -huh. Now, there are all kinds of risks, and you mentioned some of them, but is there one that stands out as particularly scary or the one that you need to solve first? Well, I think anytime you're taking a new modality into human clinical trials, one of your first concerns is always going to be safety. There's a lot we can learn from other modalities. Um, work that's been done in gene therapy is very informative. The early genome editing work is informative. But we have to think very deeply about safety and how do we do the right assessments preclinically to be confident that it's a reasonable thing to do to go into human trials. So that, that's, I, I think about that a lot for sure. Huh. Now, the company raised quite a bit of money, I think $43 million 43, yeah. last year, um, so you're well financed. Um, I also noticed that you have, looks like an all-female management team, is that right? Um, not quite. David Bumcrad is our senior director of research, and um, the, the rest of the team is uh, female at the moment, but frankly, we're just a lot of people who want to make wonderful therapies.